One of the things I love about MakerBot is that we, we priced the materials for, to make it really affordable for people to make things. Mm -hmm. So it costs you about four cents a cubic centimeter, including electricity to make something. So it's really, really affordable. So if you're gonna make something that's big, it might actually end up being cheaper to just buy a MakerBot instead of go to a service agency. That being said, if you wanna do something in metal, go to the service agencies because that's 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 pretty advanced. That's stuff that you don't want to do in your home. This is Renato Bailo for Unimind.org. Today I met the guy who's behind MakerBot. We are inside the 3D. It's Jacob Javis Center, New York City. Uh, the guy is from Brooklyn, and he came up with MakerBot. And what's your take on on the 3D world, uh, 3D printing today? Three. I mean, when we started MakerBot, we really wanted a 3D printer, but we couldn't afford one. So we made one. And when it worked, we quit our jobs and changed the world by starting a company that could bring 3D printers to everyone. And now, you know, engineers, industrial designers, architects, they use them to de design the next generation of things. Mm -hmm. And ordinary folks, parents and teachers use it, and they get to make amazing things too. When you have a MakerBot, yeah. you have it's an educate it's a manufacturing education in a box and it really allows you to explore the frontier of what happens next i see now uh let's say uh a guy buys a maker bot how does he bring a 3d model let's say he wants to make a, a sculpture of some sort you know what's your recommendation as far as tools to use in order to get uh, a certain product or an object into his computer in order to manipulate with it perhaps make it bigger or smaller and then print it out on a MakerBot for instance. So you just got a MakerBot, it's time to make something. Right. The first thing to do is to go to Thingiverse and choose something and download it and make it. And, and Thingiverse by the way is by MakerBot, is it not? Yeah, Thingiverse is a universe of things, it's the place to find and download and share digital designs to uh -huh. make things. Right. And um, we've even just recently come out with the customizer, which lets you customize things. So you can upload photos and make things with your photos. You can you can move sliders. You can do drop-down menus, and you can actually customize things, put your name on things. Really, it allows you to to make that jump from not being a designer to being a designer. And the next thing you know, you're going to be using like one two three D, which is a design program from Autodesk, right? Yeah, yeah. Or or one of the 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 kind of entry level three D modeling tools, and you're going to be designing things yourself. So, first thing you do, go download something, sh make it on your MakerBot, get used to the whole process, and then jump in and start designing things. I see. Now, there is there is a, an outsourcing kind of a thing called Shapeways, right? What can you tell about that uh, direction in terms of, like, do you see MakerBot one day becoming something like Shapeways as well for someone who cannot either afford it or perhaps... Uh, uh, you know, just wanting a quick kind of a prototype uh, without delving into like a purchase of a $2,000 or $3,000 system. One of the things I love about MakerBot is that we, we priced the materials for, to make it really affordable for people to make things. Mm -hmm. So it costs you about four cents a cubic centimeter, including electricity to make something. So it's really, really affordable. So if you're gonna make something that's big, it might actually end up being cheaper to just buy a MakerBot instead of go to a service agency. That being said, if you want to do something in metal, go to the service agencies because that's 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 pretty advanced. That's stuff that you don't want to do in your home. But for you know prototyping, for making all the things you need in your life, we use a material called PLA. It's awesome. It's friendly. Get it. Make stuff. Now my question: Are you delving into different materials at all, like uh, metal or anything like that? You know, we just have we have. Uh, Yes. You are, I see. <laughs> and uh, how, how soon do you see that happening? Uh, soon. Okay. Now, <laughs> uh, and uh, what can you tell about, like there's quite a few companies out there, just like MakerBot, right, that are doing something uh, in this particular industry. Uh, what is your niche? Where do you find that you excel than they are? We're just the best, and we, we take it personally to, to be the best and put one foot in front of the other. I mean, the MakerBot Replicator 2 is a desktop 3D printer that's on its fourth generation. And we just keep, we're, our, we're just always improving. So we, we aim to make something that makes people really happy, and then we've got a support team on the back end that helps people if you have challenges. Mm -hmm. And we're out to just lead the next industrial revolution, bring it on. Like, we're making it happen. I, see. I hear Replicator 2X uh, has, uh, it's the, the most advanced you have, right? 
That's, uh, a, that's for advanced the, users, yeah. yeah. What do you have any projections as far as bigger sizes, you know, for printing? You know, it's interesting. When we started, people were like, "Can we?" We made one that was affordable, and people were like, "We'd like it bigger," so we made a bigger one. And then we made, they wanted it bigger, so we made a bigger one. So everybody always wants bigger. I see. And the uh, the highest resolution is how many microns? You can get down to a layer resolution of 100 microns. Uh -huh.